Jonas, thanks for uh, giving us an opportunity to talk to you briefly Class. after this uh, blast. Uh, you gave us the picture of Disneyland uh, for the brain of uh, having a backyard full of innovation and a, a swirling uh, ecosystem. Yeah. So what is it? What is it in here that is inspiring you and that you consider relevant for higher education in Switzerland as well as in Germany and Europe? Yeah. So for one, it's a sense of possibility. I, I think we are surrounded by institutions that are not shy to challenge themselves and to speak of themselves in, in terms that for many other institutions, particularly in Switzerland, where, where the ethos is to be a little bit more humble and not pound your chest as hard, uh, we're surrounded by institutions that, that are actually comfortable in their skin of saying, we're leading in this field or we want to lead in this field and here's what we're doing about it and here's how we're going about it. And because we have such a high density of high, higher education institutions, uh, and not just a high density, but a high density and a high quality of uh, educational institutions in our backyard, uh, this makes it naturally a, a place that you want to look at, that you want to uh, come to and learn uh, about what is happening. And I'm not surprised that you're here. Uh, I would come too. <laughs> so basically, we can get to hear a lot what people do, but what do you think is the methodology, the recommendation in terms of transferring this mindset or this spirit, uh, how do you do that? What do you think yeah. is, is good to get that going? Well, I mean, I mean it, it, it takes a significant amount of time to, to build a culture and, and you can't build a culture by just having one person that wants uh, to change it. It takes a group of stakeholders and, and uh, if you want to change the culture of a city or a region or an ecosystem, you can't do that just from a university perspective. In, in the innovation economy, uh, there are at least five groups of stakeholders that are relevant here, and these are universities, these are the governments, these are the private sector, uh, the people that provide risk capital, uh, and people uh, that are the innovators themselves that start the companies, uh, if you want to roughly divide them into these five groups. And, and if you want to change the culture, you need to have these five groups of stakeholders collaboratively working together and coming up with a collective strategy and a unified way of how do we want to change this. If, if we want to have more startups come out of the university, you can't just change things within the university. Startups need mentors from outside. They need mentors from industry that have gone through the journey and that can guide you through it. They need funding, so you need access to risk capital. And, and sure, every place may have some amount of risk capital, but uh, the willingness to commit risk capital into risky businesses, which is the nature of startups, is very different in different places. And the risk aversion in, in the context of European countries, uh, Switzerland and Germany alike, is, uh, is very different. The risk tolerance is very different uh, there than it is here. Here you embrace that and, and it, is, it is considered normal that you fail a bunch of times uh, before you succeed uh, as, as an entrepreneur. Um, fresh out of university in, in, in the context of Switzerland, for example, uh, the, the culture around failure is still quite different. So what I'm trying to say is it, it, it can't just take one person or one group uh, or one institution saying, hey, we're going to change things and, and uh, we're going to plow through and make it happen. You need to act collectively. You need to recognize that the word ecosystem has system in it and you need to take a systems perspective and you need to find your champions within your system. Uh, and, and with those, uh, you need to um, collect, collectively collaborate on, the, on a strategy. What is the best way for you to go forward? You can't just say we, we want to innovate in, in any field. Uh, you need to recognize what are your strengths? What, what areas do you have domain expertise in that puts you at an advantage versus other areas and invest in those? Massachusetts, Boston is the life sciences epicenter of the world not just because it has a high concentration, but because the, the government of Massachusetts has invested one and a half billion into this life sciences ecosystem since 2008, I believe. And, and uh, I mean, that, that's taxpayer money that is going into the, the, the greasing the wheels of, the, of this ecosystem. And I mean, one, one great example is, is Lab Central, for example, which uh, is, is a, sort of a co-working space for uh, biosciences and biotech companies 
which uh, have obviously very high up, upfront operating costs because they need benches, they need equipment, they need advanced equipment that is very expensive to get and that they might not need 24 seven. So they just share it with other companies and Lab Central makes this available to many companies and you essentially just check out the piece of equipment that you need as you need it, when you need it. And uh, with a relatively small investment in, in the order of tens of millions in Lab Central in creating this facility, in funding this facility, uh, over I think it's over a billion dollars in, in risk capital has been invested in the companies that came out of there. And where do these companies come from? Not out of the blue, they come out of the universities. So it, again, system working together. Who helps these companies be successful? Mentors that have done it before or that come out of the big companies, the big pharma companies, the big life sciences companies, the hospitals, collective action. Collective action, last question. Yep. How do you, in your own words, I mean, we get an idea, but what is it that you think, uh, why is it needed the broker in this? Uh, what is the reason to have Swiss next and and where do you think is the added value for the system in, in Switzerland? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's fairly simple. This, this is such a big and complex environment that without a broker, it, it, without a sort of a broker, quote unquote, like we are, it would be a, a lot more complex to get to the places that you want to go to. But I also recognize that not for everything you need to go through Swissnex. You could be a Swiss university and, and achieve your objectives in Boston or in the United States without going through Swissnex. But there are some things that we are in, in a very advantageous position to work, university, work with universities. And, and when it comes to thinking about the future of higher education, some of the systemic challenges and, and the deep underlying issues uh, that the ever-changing nature of the present, uh, change is the only constant, as we know, uh, some, some of these we are prepared to tackle, again, because we cultivate relationships. I, I don't just follow in the news what people uh, around me are doing. I interact with them. I go meet with them. I, I have conversations. I look, is there a way that I can get you to collaborate with people in Switzerland? Because we're, we're, it, it is not just a, a, a taking. We're not just here to take. Switzerland has enormous capabilities and a lot to put on the table to offer and so we want this to be an exchange among equals and and if you're a researcher here or a, or a leader here in an institution and you don't know about Switzerland why would you collaborate with them you need somebody that puts that on the on the radar on the map and can facilitate that and at the same time we we try to train ourselves into seeing opportunities that are not linear that are not obvious we don't we we don't want to go into the predictable things we we try to uh, think of the things that are non obvious and non predictable and non trivial necessarily because for for all those other ones we're not needed uh, if if you think that the future of higher ed is MOOCs and and, and just putting your courses online. You don't need Swiss next. There's plenty of information and, and uh, organizations that you can connect with directly to make that your future. Uh, but if, if you recognize the complexity and the nuance, you need partners that can help you navigate that complexity and nuance. Looking forward for future navigation. Together. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. My pleasure, yeah.